Hello, I'm Jennifer Palmer with Destiny Point Church. Thanks for joining us. Today you're going to hear an inspiring message from my husband and favorite preacher, Pastor Josh Palmer. We'd love for you to join us in person on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. For more information, visit us online at destinypoint.com. This morning I want to continue our series, part number two of our series titled Unlock It. Everybody say, Unlock It. Unlock It. Have you ever needed something unlocked and you couldn't find the key? That's a tough situation, isn't it? How many is thankful that when you come across the key and you can get into the place that you need to get into? It means a lot, doesn't it? It's, it's refreshing. It's a, it brings a life to you and takes the burden off when you finally find the key and you can get into that safe where you've kept that million dollars away from your spouse. <laughs> It's a blessing to find a key to get into the place that you need to be. I want to tell you spiritually, God has given us keys to unlock some things spiritually and through faith that can absolutely change our life and strengthen our faith and our walk with Him in faith and in this natural life. Amen? I'm thankful for the keys of the kingdom. And today we're going to continue our series, part number two of unlock it Matthew chapter 16 verse number 13 through 19 has been our passage uh, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples he said who do men say that I am some they replied they said some are saying you're John the Baptist some say you're Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets but then Jesus said but who do you say that I am Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Jesus answered him, said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this unto you, but my father in heaven has revealed this. He's given you revelation of who I really am. He said, I say unto you, you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church and the kingdom of God. Then he said this, he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. I believe with all my heart that God is about to give us revelation so that we can access some keys that's going to change our season. Amen. God's about to put a key in your hand that's going to change your season, that can change your circumstance, that can change your dilemma. He's got keys that he wants to place in your life that you can begin to use and access and change some stuff. I believe with all my heart there's some people leaving this service this morning. You're going to leave here with revelation. You're going to leave here with knowledge. You're going to leave here with spiritual wisdom. But there's going to be some folks that's going to leave here healed. There's going to be some folks leave here saved. There's going to be some folks that's going to leave here delivered, forgiven. Your past bondage and chains are going to be broken in Jesus name. Amen. Lift your hands. Father, we ask you to bless us in your word today. Strengthen us. We thank you for the holy word of God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Touch three or four people around you. Say, unlock it. Unlock it. Unlock it. <laughs> you can be seated in the name of the Lord. Our series, our series is about understanding catching revelation and knowledge, wisdom of the Lord, and to understand that he has given us keys to the kingdom. These are Jesus's words. I'm not here to try to make up something to, uh, you know, to get you on an emotional high. But I come to tell you and reiterate to you what Jesus said to his disciples at that moment and through his disciples to his disciples, which are you and I today. 
He spoke to them and through them to you and I. And he said that I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And through faith and through obedience and through revelation, our series is about unlocking some stuff. It's about unlocking blessing in our life. It's about unlocking favor in our life, unlocking the promises of God over us. It's about unlocking increase. It's about unlocking power, unlocking authority. God has a fresh anointing that he wants to release in your life. We're ready to unlock a fresh anointing over our ministry and our life. It's about unlocking a new level of strength and encouragement and power and purpose. It's about unlocking deliverance and healing and joy and peace over our life, over our spouse, over our family, over our homes, over our finances, over our future. The series is about unlocking some stuff because we got some keys that we can use. Amen? Got some keys. This is a year of breakthrough. We've been declaring that over our church. A year of breakthrough. And we are absolutely in a spiritual time where God is confirming that in the year of breakthrough, that in this season, that he is unlocking some stuff. You know, it's amazing. There's a dear brother that's a good friend and connected to our church, um, Brother Doug Lopez. Will you give us a little wave? You're back here. He has an incredible mustache. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, Brother Doug was working or at home, and the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to go get something off of your workbench. And I want you to take it and I want you to give it to Pastor Josh. Little did Doug know that at the same time, I had released on Facebook in our church page and shared about the series that God was downloading in my heart about the keys to the kingdom. Doug had made something, what, almost 30 years ago. And he would use these in different times and he had them on his workbench. And the Lord spoke to him to bring those and to give them to us and to our church. At the same time that God was speaking to my heart and the same time that I released that we were about to unlock some stuff and that God is going to teach us about the keys to the kingdom. On a Friday at a prayer meeting, Doug walked in and he handed me these keys that he made over 30, about 30 years ago. He said, the Lord spoke to me and told me to give you these keys. And I about fell out in the spirit in the floor. Because how many knows that God knows what he's up to? He knows what he's up to. When I first moved to Columbia from Indianapolis almost seven years ago, the church was five years old. We lived here for a couple years getting the church ready, laying some groundwork, getting ready. I moved here. That first fall that I moved here, I was here just a few months. I went to a church in uh, Kansas City. I went over to a worship uh, uh, service. And I was in this service, and the glory of God was moving, touching uh, lives and hearts. And man, his presence was there so strong. And I remember I got down on my knees and I began to pray at my seat. And I was just praying during the worship time. And the Lord spoke something very clear and profound and strong to my spirit. I know when the Lord speaks a word to my heart. How many is thankful that the Lord will speak to you? The Holy Ghost will speak to your heart. And he said this line right here when I was praying. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to your city. I want you to realize that it was like revelation. It was, it was um, rhema word that hit my heart at that moment. It came alive. I know it sounds real uh, simple. We know it's in the word, but it was alive at that moment. The Lord said, I'm going to give you keys to this city. I'm not naive. I know that there are incredible churches in this city. And God has given churches and leaders great keys to the kingdom. But he's also given us some keys to help 
help other churches and together we are impacting this city and this region. Amen. So the keys wasn't for me. The keys was for this body and for the body of Christ across this town to add some more keys to this city. Keys to the kingdom. He said, I'm going to give you keys to the city. Well, the next day I came to Columbia, or I was back home here in Columbia and I had to go downtown. And I was new to the city and didn't know everything in the city. I'm driving through downtown. I stop at a red light. The Lord the night before had spoke to me in this service. I'm going to give you keys to the city. I'm sitting at a red light. I'm thinking about this. Thank you, Lord. What, what does that entail? What does that mean? And I look to my right. And right in front of the city building, the city of Columbia building, there is a, um, a light up fixture, a lit up fixture uh, that is a keyhole. Has anyone ever seen it? A keyhole right there. It's, it's about, you know, maybe 10 feet high or so. It looks like a keyhole. And, and when you look through it, there's the city of Columbia. The building says city of Columbia. I'm sitting at a red light. And the Lord has spoken this to me the night before. I'm at a red light and I look over. And for the first time, I recognize this keyhole. And boy, I want to get my shout on. Because I feel like God is just speaking. And he's just bringing some confirmation. I know that sounds like super spiritual. But listen, I want you to realize something. I am super spiritual. <laughs> and you know what I did, Kyle? I got out of my car. I drove and parked. I didn't stop at the red light and get out. I drove over and parked. I couldn't find any change. So I said, Lord, cover me. No. I got out literally willy. And I went and I stood underneath that, that keyhole display. And I stood under it and I said, Lord... In the name of Jesus, I pray revival, outpouring, lives changed, souls saved, marriages restored, wayward children coming back to the Lord, diseases healed, devils running off. In the name of Jesus, I stood underneath that keyhole and I said, Lord, you've given your people the keys to the kingdom. You've given us keys to this city and we're going to turn this city upside down for Jesus. How many knows in five years? We've seen almost 500 people get saved in these altars. God is moving in this church, in this city, and other churches in this town. We're about to see a revival like we've never seen before. Amen. I didn't mean to get preachy just yet. You need to sit down. I feel it in my bones today. I feel it in my spirit. Amen to unlock, write this down. Because I don't want to just give you an emotional high and boost. I want you to, to catch some revelation and get some stuff. To unlock by definition means this. It means to access. It means to, to loose. It means to open. It means to set free, release, deliver, and to let out. To unlock something means to access something to and for its fullest functionality, God didn't just halfway save you. He didn't intend to just halfway heal you. When he gives you a key and opens up a door, it's for full functionality. Amen? To unlock means to deliver and to let out or to move into, unlock and move into a room, a realm, a level through a door into another place to open up a thing, to access a thing, to release a thing. That's what the word unlock means. And I want to ask somebody again this morning, is there anybody that's ready to receive some keys from the kingdom to unlock some stuff in your life? Does anybody need some stuff unlocked in your life? Maybe maybe it's a financial breakthrough. Maybe it's a, a, a job opportunity. Maybe it's a child that is a product son or daughter far from God and you need the, the enemy to be bound and God to begin to loose his word over them. Maybe it's your spouse that's far from God and you need 
God to give you some keys to unlock some stuff in your life. Is there anybody ready to discover the fullness of Jesus and what he's sharing about the keys and learning how to bind and to loose some things? Is there anybody ready to place some new keys on your spiritual key ring? I believe in my heart, some of you in the spirit, you're going to look like a high school janitor. You're going to have so many keys on your key ring. You don't even know what they're all for and what they're about. But spiritually, God's about to add some new keys to your key ring. You're going to be walking around all over the place, unlocking stuff, loosening stuff, binding stuff in Jesus' name. Because you got the power. I'm preaching to you through faith. We're about to release some things in the heavenlies and into our life. Amen. We're about to access some new doors. We're about to release some things that the enemies try to lock up and keep from us. Us. We're about to loose a blessing over our life. We're about to deliver some favor, some increase, some strength. Some of you about to unlock your purpose like never before in your life. It's going to be clear. It's going to be relevant. It's going to be revolutionary to your life. God's about to unlock some purpose in you. Yeah. Man, Mark chapter number 11, Mark chapter number 11, uh, Jesus is preaching here, or Jesus is talking to his disciples rather, and he says, I want you to go to a village over against you, and he says, and as soon as you enter there, you are going to find a colt that is tied. How many knows that Jesus loves the colts? Some of you caught that. I'm from Indianapolis, you, you may, I don't know. He found, Jesus said, there is a colt that is tied up. And he said, never a man has sat upon it. He said, what? Loose him and bring him to me. And if any man say to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord hath need of him. And straightway he will send him. And they went their way and they found the colt that was tied by the door in a place where two ways meet. In other words, at a place of intersection. They found the colt tied up where a man had never sat. And they loosed him to bring him because Jesus was about to write something brand new. I want to tell you today that I believe believe in this room. I catch this revelation. I believe in this room that God is about to bring an opportunity. God is about to bring a blessing. God is about to bring something your way. You've been walking this path and God is about to cross your path with a blessing or an opportunity. There's going to be an intersection of opportunity before you and God's saying when you get to this intersection and you see this opportunity you need to loose it because when you loose it I'm about to ride something on you that I've never rode before I'm about to put something on you that you've never had before some of you are about to come to an intersection of opportunity and blessing and increase you're about to see something that you've never seen before but you got to obey the Lord you've got to loose it and you've got to release it and then you got to walk in it and allow the Lord to to bring it to fruition in your life. How many is ready for an intersection of opportunity, a fresh anointing, a fresh blessing? How many is ready to loose that thing in your life? Yeah. Go ahead and elbow your neighbor and say, I'm about to have an opportunity come my way. I believe some folk are ready to receive some keys. Amen. God's about to unlock some stuff. God's about to unlock some stuff. Go ahead and look at your neighbor on your left and say, God's about to unlock some stuff. <laughs> Go ahead and look at your neighbor on your right and say, God's about to unlock some stuff. Go ahead and look behind you and say, you better get ready because God is about to unlock some stuff in your life. Listen, I want you to catch this by faith. I want you to catch this. I'm, I, I'm inspiring. I'm teaching. I'm sharing a little bit, but I feel this in my bones to declare this. God's about to unlock some stuff in you. God's about to un unlock some stuff over you. God's about to unlock some stuff around you. God's about to unlock some stuff for you. And God's about to unlock some stuff through you. We are moving into a season where we're about to bind some stuff and we're about to lose some blessing and favor and strength and power and anointing and revival and outpouring in our lives. Man, 
I come to remind you that you have authority to loose and to bind. Everybody say loose and bind. Now say bind and loose. <laughs> you have authority to bind and to loose. Jesus said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on the earth will be loose in the heavens. There is the opportunity and the authority given to you and keys placed in your hand by faith to receive those, to use those, that you have the authority to bind and loose in earth realms and in spiritual realms. He's speaking of natural realms and supernatural realms. He said, what you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. What you loose on the earth will be loosed in the heavens. You have access to pull something from the supernatural into your natural situation. You have been diagnosed with sickness. It's a natural thing that plagues your body. But by his stripes, you were healed. You can reach into the kingdom. Reach into the spiritual realm and grab his word and pull it into your natural element. And see your body line up to his word and be healed in Jesus' name. You have the power to bind and to loose. Man, I feel this in my heart. You have authority to bind the enemy in his ways. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. The devil wreaking havoc supernaturally and maybe even try to bring a demoniac in the natural realm to harm your life. Listen, it doesn't have to harm your life. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The, the Lord will even place a table and set a table before you and even in the presence of your enemy. Psalm 91 said I could be hidden in the shadow of the almighty. The devil could try to take me out even in the natural realm. There could be an enemy that want to take me out but I could be hidden in the shadow of the almighty where they can't even see me. I pray over my children every day. My two oldest that go to school. When they get out of the car I say Lord hide them in your presence. When the devil tries to find them and wants to harm them and abuse them and mess them up he won't even be able to find them. He'll say where's Riley and where's Seth because they are hidden in the spiritual realm even though they're in the natural realm come on somebody man I feel I feel like old school preacher in my heart today <laughs> see we come to serve notice on the enemy that we have power to bind and to loose uh, are you catching this today am I am I helping you a little bit this morning you have the power to bind and to loose we come to serve notice on the enemy that we are binding sickness and we are loosing I don't know if that's the right we come to loose healing we come to bind poverty and we're going to loose blessing we come to bind depression and loose joy we come to bind anxiety and loose peace we come to bind the spirit of fear and loose a sound mind. We come to bind the spirit of offense and we're going to loose forgiveness. We come to bind the spirit of intimidation and loose confidence. We come to bind the scaredy cat in your heart and release the lion of the tribe of Judah in you. We come to bind religion and we come to loose revival. We come to bind racism and loose unity. We come to bind sexual perversion and loose purity. We come to bind principality over this city and release glories and portals of glories over this city. We bond rebellion and gossip and arrogance and the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab and Absalom and Judas and we loose the power of the Holy Ghost. We loose the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We loose the gifts of the Spirit. We loose the language of the Spirit. The conviction of the Spirit. We bind every power and principality in hell and we loose the power of God over our lives, over our family, over our church, and over our city in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. We 
come to bind some stuff. We come to unlock some stuff. God's good. Kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. If you're a guest today, hang in there. <laughs> I don't always preach this loud. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> The kingdom, man, I just feel fired up, man. I feel authority. I feel anointing. I feel, I'm telling you, I feel it. Listen, I, I, don't only, I don't only feel it, I know it. I know it. He's given us the keys, amen. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. He's given you the keys to the kingdom. Jesus spoke about kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. It's so vital. You, you got to watch on our church's YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, type in Destiny Point Church. Point has an E on it. I wish I would have never done that because I always have to say that. <laughs> Try to get fancy. Now every time I tell people, oh, what's your website? DestinyPoint.com. Point has an E on it or you won't find us. <laughs> Maybe that should be our new slogan. Come to Destiny Point Church. Point with an E on it. That'll draw people. <laughs> That'll draw people all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, E for eternity. I like it. <laughs> you guys are getting too super spiritual. <laughs> the kingdom. <laughs> The kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. Jesus spoke about kingdom. Jesus came to redeem and he came to impose the kingdom in the earth, didn't he? He came to redeem humanity and everything that was lost in sin. And he came to establish his kingdom in the hearts of his people. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance, I, I, you got to watch this again, YouTube, Destiny Point Church with an E on point. Go to YouTube, watch last week's message because I don't have time to go into it all again. Talked about kingdom last week. Repent for the kingdom of his, is at hand. His Pharisees and Sadducees around him, religious folk that were far from God. <laughs> Did you catch that? Religious people far from God. They asked him, they didn't like Jesus. They said, where is your kingdom if you're a king? He said, my kingdom isn't here or there. You can't go over there or go over here and see it or find it with your natural eye. He said, but my kingdom is within. It's within. When you got saved and you come to Christ and you accepted the free gift of salvation, you entered into the kingdom. You have citizenship. I preached about that last week. You have citizenship in the kingdom. You have rights. You have opportunities. You have authority in the kingdom now. Jesus preached and talked a lot about his kingdom. It's set up in our heart and we live and flow through the kingdom as believers. Jesus spoke about keys to the kingdom. He said, I'm going to give you keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in the heavens. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. The first Adam forfeited the keys. God told him to subdue the earth and have dominion and authority and replenish the earth. But through their sin, they forfeited their dominion and their authority and their power. And the enemy stepped right in and become the prince of the power of the air. Trying to take dominion in this earth realm and even in the spirit both to try to set his kingdom up and for thousands of years he has been trying to work and set his kingdom right he did so and tried to but Jesus who was known as the second Adam he came and he came to die to pay the price to redeem man and get those keys back. We preached a little bit about that last week. The first Adam forfeited the keys, but the second Adam, Jesus, came and he took the keys back. 
Why did he have to, why did he do what he had, why couldn't he just go to Satan and take the keys? This isn't in my notes, but I feel like sharing this with you. Because God in the beginning gave man dominion in the earth. So Jesus not only to come in the spiritual realm as the son of God, he had to be born of flesh to be also the son of man. Because he had to realize, he had to show us and he had to fulfill that he was not only now authority in the spiritual realm as the son of God, but man and flesh was given dominion in the earth in the beginning. So now it comes as the son of man. Jesus said that anyone that goes into the sheep gate, except for through the door, is a thief and a liar. You have to go through the door to be a legitimate shepherd. What was the door he's referring to? The door was the womb of a woman. The enemy is a liar and trespasser because he has no flesh and really he has no dominion in the earth. So Jesus come as the son of God, but wrapped himself in flesh, come through the womb of a woman to be the son of man, to enter through the gate, to be the right shepherd and the perfect shepherd and the perfected shepherd. <laughs> he entered the gates the right way. So when he died, no doubt the devil couldn't say to him, I'm not, I can't give you the keys because you're not, you didn't go the right way. He was not only the son of God, but now the son of man died, resurrected. Now he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Jesus talked about these keys. Revelation 1.18, Jesus possesses these keys. Revelation 1.18, but then he also shared with us and gave us understanding and told us that we are going to receive the keys to the kingdom. He took keys and now he's got keys to place in your hand, his body, his people, his children. Amen. I want to tell you that keys to the kingdom are for now. Everybody say for now and here. When we go to heaven and we spend eternity with God and heaven comes down, there's a new Jerusalem. We ain't going to need the keys to the kingdom to bind and to loose. Are you with me? You don't need anointing in heaven. <laughs> Because the anointed one, you're in his presence. But an anointing, a mantle, impartation, or a key to the kingdom is for now and here. It is needed in this realm, in this day. Keys to bind and keys to loose. Again, a key's purpose is to give access and advancement of the kingdom. In your life, in your family, in your faith, in your children, in your purpose. The key is given to you so that you can access some things, to advance some things in your life, to unlock some things and to bind some things. Now and here. Are you with me? Keys are for now and here. Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 11 verse 12, he said, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. See, Jesus was always preaching and teaching about his kingdom. And then he's teaching about keys to the kingdom that he's given his sons and daughters. And he says that the kingdom suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. I want you to understand something. What he is saying here is that I have given you keys to the kingdom and now you are in the kingdom. I want you to realize that you now have the right, the, the authority, and the opportunity to impose the kingdom in your realm. 
The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Now you have the authority to be forceful with the kingdom and the kingdom keys to impose the kingdom. Listen, the enemy, listen, we don't have to ask the enemy permission to invoke the kingdom and to use our keys. You don't need Satan's permission. You don't need the devil's permission. You don't need demoniac's permission. You don't need people that's acting like the devil all around you permission to use your keys to the kingdom. The kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent take it by force. You have the power and the authority to impose the kingdom. Listen, when we moved here a few years ago to start this church, I didn't get here and sit down at a table and say, okay, Satan, I know that you are here and all those principalities and powers and demonic spirits that are here. Would it be okay if we started a little church and we just met over here in the hotel? We won't get real loud. We won't try to win a whole lot of people. We'll just do our real little religious thing. Is it okay, Satan, that we start a church over here? No, we didn't ask him as permission because this earth isn't his in the first place. This is the Lord's and he's a trespasser. We come to invoke and impose the kingdom. I didn't ask him, is it okay to pray for people that are sick? Is it okay to cast out devils? Is it okay, Satan, to see people get saved? We didn't ask his permission. We come to take it by force. We come to impose the kingdom of God. Listen, you need to look at your sickness and say, you know what? You have no right in my body. I come to impose the kingdom over sickness. We don't get permission from depression. We don't get permission from the devil if we can move in the kingdom of God. The devil has no right and you have every ounce of authority and power to impose the kingdom of God and use your keys in this realm and in the heavenlies. <laughs> Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, that pastor is straight crazy. Because that's how some of you are looking. So I want to say that to you. Crazy for Jesus. <laughs> Keys to the kingdom. Listen, I'm almost done. We're about to impose heaven on earth. I said, we're about to impose heaven on earth. We're about to impose heaven on earth. In the Lord's prayer, he said, let your will be done on what? earth as it is in what? Heaven. In heaven, in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom, there is no sickness. There is no disease in the kingdom of God in heaven around his throne. So let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We come to impose heaven in earth in our situations and circumstances. The kingdom of God suffereth violence. Violent, take it by force. We come to impose the kingdom on principalities. We come to, to impose the kingdom of light on darkness. The devil got nervous this morning when you woke up. You hear me? He said, oh man, I got up again. I come to the house of God. I'm going to try to discourage. I'm going to try to get them just to be quiet because there's something about a Judah to God that can bring a breakthrough. You guys remember that message? I'm going to just, it's okay that they go to church, the devil said, but I don't want them to praise. I don't want them to get excited about the Lord. I don't want them to get in agreement. I don't want them to press in. But we come to impose the kingdom of God on his darkness. To impose means to force. And I love this definition. To impose means to force something that is unwelcome or unfamiliar. Have you ever had somebody impose on you? <laughs> your hair isn't did. <laughs> you haven't brushed your teeth yet. Someone knocks on the door. And you're looking out the side window real, real, real easy through the blinds. And you're like, why is Johnny here? I didn't ask him to come over. I know he's going to stay all day. How many of you have some folks that stay all day when they come? <laughs> Impose on you. 
Impose means to force something that is unwelcome. How many knows the devil thinks that he owns this city? The devil thinks he owns your kids. The devil thinks he owns your finances. The devil thinks he owns your body. The devil thinks he owns your health. The devil thinks that he has rights to your mind and your stability in your mindset, in your faith. The devil is a liar. We come to serve notice on him that this city isn't his. You don't belong to him. Your children don't belong to him. We come to impose the kingdom. We come to make him real uncomfortable. We come to make him push himself out of this city and this region now your family and now your ways. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to impose on the enemy. I, I, I got to share a couple things that the Lord told me to deal with today. Number one, are you ready? Number one, everybody say sickness. Sickness. Jess, you can come to the music. Everybody say sickness one more time. The Lord told me to deal with this. I have more teaching. I have, listen, I actually have two sermons for today and I had to choose which one to go with. I'm not kidding. I wrote out two. If you want to come back, maybe tonight. No. Sickness. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Say no. Listen, sickness. Sickness. The Lord told me to deal with sickness. Listen, the word sickness by definition means this. It means ill health. Dis to be disordered in the body. To be weakened or un to have an unsound condition. Sickness means the state of being unhealthy or not well and not whole. I come to tell somebody today. And it's not about authority is not in the volume of your voice, in my voice. It's not in the volume, it's in the weight of the anointing that you carry. You don't have to yell at demons to come out of someone. You can just whisper in Jesus' name. It's not about a volume, it's about a weight and authority that you carry. Man. I come to tell someone that sickness has no right to be in you or on you. I feel the burden for so many to declare, remind you, and to speak over you that sickness has no right to be in you or on you. Sickness is from the curse, but Jesus died on the cross and he broke the curse. Infirmity is weakness in being feeble and diseased. And infirmity has no right to claim your body and your mind and your health. I come to serve notice on the enemy and his curse. I come to bind heart disease and cancer and tumors and diabetes and leukemia and heart issues. We bind you in Jesus name. We bind Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and the effects of strokes and headaches and migraines and high blood pressure and, and MS. We bind it in Jesus name. We bind blindness and deafness and joint problems and arthritis and cysts in the body and upon the body. Respiratory issues and even conception struggles. We bind it in the name of Jesus. Matthew 4 and 23. Jesus went proclaiming the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and disease. James 5, 14 and 15. Any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray the prayer of faith. Let them anoint with oil and they will be healed. Exodus 15 and 26. I won't allow any disease to come on you. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 23 and 25. I will take sickness from amongst you. Psalm 107 and 20. He sent his word and he healed him of all their disease. Isaiah 53. By his stripes we were healed. We come to serve notice on sickness and disease and every label and every diagnosis from the enemy and from the doctors. We come to say in Jesus sustain be healed be healed we bind sickness and we lose the power and the word of the healing God over our lives lift your hands and say Lord heal my body heal my body number two depression fear anxiety we come to serve notice
focus on depression and fear and anxiety. They say that 80% of Americans suffer from some level of depression. Both, listen, depression, both is an attack of darkness and it can also be a chemical imbalance in the body. Depression is a wicked and terrorizing feeling and force. And it's a real thing, isn't it? Anxiety and fear can come on you out of nowhere. Anxiety and fear can paralyze one's mind. But my Bible says in Isaiah 41 and 10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous hand. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. I want you to lift your hands right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of depression. In the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of anxiety and fear. In the name of Jesus, we bind chemical imbalance in the body. In the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of insecurity and anxiety. And in the name of Jesus, we lose peace. In the name of Jesus, we lose joy. In the name of Jesus, we lose a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, we lose confidence. In the name of Jesus, we lose the lion of the tribe of Judah to rise within you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I'm almost done. Number three, everybody say lack. There's so many things to tackle, but this is what the Lord told me to tackle today. Sickness, fear, anxiety, depression, and lack. Lack is the state of being without or not having enough. To be deficient in one or many of a thing. Now, we've got to use wisdom. Sometimes we are in lack because we didn't use wisdom. We go buy stuff that we can't really afford. Then we say, Lord, help me. We got to use wisdom. But I also realized, man, that there are folks that you've been obedient to God. You, are, you bring his tithes. You sow seed of time, talent, and treasure. You've been giving. You've been serving. You've been following. You've been speaking the word, but it seems like you've been in a season of lack, a state of being without or not having enough to meet the need. And, and, and the Lord wants you to be blessed, to be a blessing, to have more than enough. He would open up the windows of heaven, pour out so many blessings that you couldn't even contain them all. He's a God of overflow, a God of more than enough. He wants to fill you up where it flows over you and around you to others around you. But there's many that's living in lack. Listen, the enemy wants you in lack. He doesn't mind you going to church as long as you got some lack in your life that keeps you down and bound and struggling and in depression. The enemy, listen, he wants to keep you in lack in your faith, your finances, and your needs being met. Because if he can keep you in lack, he can exhaust your mind and he can affect your spirit and your heart and bring depression and struggle against you if you're not careful. Listen, he wants to bring lack. He wants to steal your energy and your purpose and your joy and the things that you need. But listen, I want to tell you, if you're obedient to the things of the Lord, the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 19 that my God shall, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Joshua 4 and 13 says, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you didn't plant. I'm going to give you cities that you didn't even labor for. I'm going to give you houses. I'm going to give you things that you didn't even work for because he's a God that's going to bless you. He's going to meet your need and then he's going to give you some extra to bless you, to bring increase and favor in your life. So lift your hands right now in Jesus' name. No more lack. No more struggle. No more lack. No more not enough. My God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think according to his 
way. I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to stand on your feet today. Come on, stand on your feet. I want you to lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Our band they come. I worship. Thank you, Father. Come on, lift your hands to him. Come on, just for one minute here. Just worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord. We worship. circumstance in your life what is it that you need pray that the Lord will release that key in your life and you begin to impose that kingdom and those keys to bind and to loose I want to tell you you have power today number one you have power in the name of Jesus <laughs> everybody say in the name of Jesus there's something about his name demons tremble at the mission of his name you have the name of Jesus that means you have authority you have power Rick Clinton and the spiritual father was one of I believe 14 children he was a baby of 14 children and his he said he tells stories that growing up in eastern Kentucky his older brothers and sisters wouldn't let him play games with them at times and he would be upset he was a baby of 14 and he'd go to his mom and say they won't let me play and his mom would say you look at me you go back there and you tell them mama said I let you play he said that he would get his chest out there get confidence and say let me play and they say no get out of here and he said mama said let me play you know what it was her name has some weight her name has some authority didn't it you have the name of Jesus. You have the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Come on, say, in the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. Declare the blood of Jesus. The enemy hates the blood of Christ. The enemy can't cross the bloodline. In the name of Jesus, we declare the blood of Jesus. And then we have a key called our mouth. Life and death are in the power of I'm not going to speak death. I'm not going to speak lack. I'm not going to speak less than. I'm not going to speak depression. With my word, my declaration, I am healed. I am delivered. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail because he said so. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blood of Jesus that I'm more than a conqueror. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blood of Jesus that I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am delivered and set free. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, my children shall be saved. My children are going to come home. My marriage is going to be restored. My finances will be restored in Jesus' name.